Hi everyone and welcome to this new video about power factor correction. This is our example number three. In this example we will consider a capacitive load which is connected to a power supply VS and the capacitive load is modeled as a series RC circuit. We have a resistor and a capacitor in series. The values of, the comp of these components are given here. The question in place here is the following. Calculate the required value of the inductor, this is the parallel element here in this case, to increase the power factor to 0 0.95 lagging. As you know, without the, without the inductor, this circuit will have a power factor which is leading because it is an RC circuit, so the current will lead, the, so the source current will lead the source voltage. That means actually we have a leading power factor. So using the uh, inductor, which is connected uh, parallel to the capacitive load, we will increase the power factor to actually one, which is actually the desired value. But in this case, specifically, we are also required to make the uh, power factor also a little bit lagging. So it is actually 0 0.95 lagging. Okay, let's first start with the situation without the inductor. So what is the situation without the inductor? So I will first begin with that. So let's look at the impedance of the circuit. So Z is equal to R minus JXC. This is actually the reactance of the capacitor. XC, what's XC? We haven't calculated that yet. So XC is equal to 1 over omega times C, which is given in the question. So omega is 800 times 2 microfarad. So I will I've calculated that as 625 ohms. Okay, that's actually the situation for the reactance of the capacitor. So let's fill in the values. What do we have? We have uh, Z is equal to 500 minus J625 ohms. And if you convert this to polar notation, you will have 800 phase minus 51 degrees. Okay, now if you uh, prefer to see this also uh, graphically, let's make a drawing of this that will help also in the understanding of the situation. So let's make uh, y axis for the imaginary part and the x axis for the real part. So we have the following situation. So let's draw first the real part, that's the R and also the imaginary part which is minus jxc and i will make this also red so the factorial summation of these two components will make the impedance z which is shown here which is this is z and we have a phase here i will denote this by theta 1 because this is situation 1 we will also have the situation 2 the theta 1 here is the following this is theta so this is actually theta and the amplitude of the z so this is amplitude of the z so this is the magnitude of, the, of z so this is z magnitude so i will write it down again here so z the magnitude of this is 800 ohms and the theta 1 in this case is minus 51 degrees so that is actually for this situation so how do we continue let's also calculate the current the supply current which is actually the current flowing in the circuit which is of course without the inductor in this case so what is that in in phasor notations so this is actually the following is will be equal to Vs RMS of course because we need the RMS values divided by the impedance we have calculated just a moment ago so what we have is the following v, Vs RMS because is a, this is a pure sinusoidal signal we just divide by square root of 2 so what we have is the following we have 120 volts as amplitude you divide by square root of 2 and that's actually the value here so if i substitute everything in this expression for the current i will have 120 divided by 
square root of 2 to come to the RMS value. And again, this is at the phase of 0 uh, degrees. So I will have divided by 800 this phase of minus 51 degrees. So if you do this correctly, you will have approximately 0 0.106. Amperes with a phase of 51 degrees. So if you if you, you can already see that this is a positive phase, it means actually the current, the supply current, will lead the voltage by 51 degrees, which is positive. That means actually it's leading. So uh, the concept of leading or lagging is determined by the supply current. Okay. Now since we know it is a series connection, so it is a series connection. For the supply voltage in the R and the C, what we have here without the inductor, of course, we can say the I R is equal to I C and it's also equal to I supply, which is again 0 0.106 phase 51 amperes. So, what is actually the next uh, step? The next step is actually calculation of the dissipated power. In the, in the pure ohmic uh, component of the uh, capacitive load and also the reactive, pow reactive power. So it's actually uh, stored in the capacitor. So let's move on to the values for the power calculation. So P, which is actually the true power, will be equal to IR squared times R. And we will take the magnitude of the value there. So what we have is the following 0 0.106 squared times 500. And this will give us 5.62. So this is actually 5.62, which is in watts. And if I make also the calculation for the Q, which is I QC or Q1 in this case because this is the one uh, first situation. So it is IC squared times XC and XC will already calculated. So it is exactly the same current. So 0 0.16 squared times 625. So that will give us 7.02 and which is of course in volt amperes reactive. Okay, that's actually the situation. Now, in this uh, situation, without, of course, the inductor, we have the apparent power, so it is S1, which is the summation of P and J Q1. Because it is a, a capacitive uh, component, we know already that it is a minus sign, so let's write it down also, so it's a minus sign, and this will give us the S1 will be 5.62 minus J 7.02 and this will be this will have the units of uh, volt amperes and if you convert this to polar notation you will have 8.99 with a phase of minus 51 degrees and again volt amperes and if I make a drawing of this which will also clarify the situation well, we have the following I have the imaginary axis again and the real axis, imaginary and the real axis. And again, I make the real part that is for the resistor, so it's the P. And I have the capacitive, the reactive component that is the minus Q1. Okay, the vectorial sum of this, which is exactly the same operation as for the impedance will make the apparent power S1. And this phase, which you see here, is again the same theta. So theta here is again the minus 51 degrees. But now the power factor. What is the power factor here? So what is the power factor in this situation? So power factor 1, I will make this as PF1, which, which is given by the formula cosine of the theta one. And we know because it is a, a leading, we will have a 
we will have to also denote this. So what, what is the value? The value, if you calculate this, is the cosine of minus 51 degrees. So this will give us 0 0.63 and it is leading. And remember, this is very important. I will uh, make this clear. You have to and you have to make clear that it's leading or lagging because it doesn't uh, this mark this will not make any sense without the uh, extra information uh, leading or the lagging so 0 0.63 it is leading why because the current was leading the voltage okay this is for the situation without connecting the inductor so that actually the situation will now change because if we connect the inductor we will see the situation too so what is the situation two and what is the required actually for situation two? Let's uh, move up a little bit and read, this, uh, read the question again. We would like to have a power factor of 0 0.95 lagging. So if I uh, make the situation two and draw the circuit, draw the diagram again. So what we have is the following. I have the power factor for the second case and I will make this PF2 which must be 0 0.95 lagging okay this will give us the phase P theta 2 as arc cosine 0 0.95 which is plus 80 degrees and because it's uh, lagging we have a theta of, of a positive theta okay let's make now the drawing for the uh, for the power so we have again the do it in black so we have again the imaginary axis and the real axis okay now in situation one so let's draw it again we have the power p and i will make this again clear the p and i will have of course also the component which is the minus q1 this is actually for situation one we have already drawn this but it will make it will be clear if i redraw it again and place the second situation also in this same diagram so this is actually for s1 so this is the situation and we have the phase theta one what i now want is there is a new um, apparent power which will have a phase difference between the true power p and the s2 which is given by theta Two. and i know already because it is a lagging the phase must be positive so if i now uh, determine the vertical component of the green arrow the s2 this will give us j q2 and now is the interesting thing is how do we determine the required reactive action by inductor now you can already see we have to move up from minus j q1 to plus j q2 that means this distance must be supplied by the inductor you might say why not the capacitor because the capacitor will uh, take this uh, more to the negative uh, axis of the vertical so we have to move up so to move up you need actually a inductor so that's actually the situation for inductor that means actually for the QL, you can see that we need a distance of a Q2 minus minus Q1. So that's actually the uh, value for QL and a QL will be then if you fill in the values, what is Q, Q2? So let's calculate first this, what is Q2? Because this is actually also in, uh, required. So the Q2 can be calculated using the value of p and also the theta so two so if i do that so i have the tangent of theta theta 2 is equal to q2 divided by p so i have q2 
q2 will be p times tangent of theta 2. So if I fill in the values I already know, it will give us 5.62 tangent of 18 degrees, which is required for theta 2, and this will give us 1.83 volt amperes reactive. Okay, that means then I will continue with blue, then the following QL will be 1.83 minus minus 7.02. That's actually the situation here. So if you calculate this, you will have the required value for your inductor reactive power. So this is actually the reactive power which must be uh, stored in the inductor. So what you have is the following. You have done 8.85 volt amperes reactive. Okay, that's actually the situation for this case. What is the next step? The next step is actually look at the, at the circuit because we are in the situation 2. Situation 2 means actually the inductor is placed uh, in parallel to the capacitor. So that means actually the same voltage Vs will be also applied across the terminals of the inductor. That means the voltage and the reactance of the inductor can be used and of course the reactive power which we have calculated ju uh, just a minute ago to determine the value of the L. So let's move on with that uh, calculation. So what I want is Q L which is equal to V L RMS squared divided by X L. That's actually the situation. And we already know V L RMS is equal to V source RMS, which is 120 divided by square root of 2, which is approximately 50, 85 uh, volts or 84.9 volts this is in RMS. So if I substitute this, so what do I have? I have the following. So QL is 8.85 is equal to 84.9 squared divided by XL. So this will give me X, XL of 815 ohms. But I need the value of the inductor. So XL is equal to omega times L. So L, the value of L will be XL divided by omega. This will be 815 815 divided by the value of the uh, frequent the value of the omega that is 800. So this will give us 1 point, 1 0.02 Henry's. So we require a inductor of 1.02 Henry's. If you make this larger for example, this value for the inductor, what do you have? You will have, of course, also a larger reactance. Making a larger reactance will also produce, uh, if you look, if you follow this uh, formula, you will have also a larger QL. So that's actually the situation that will also result in, in a lower phase. So it's depending on the situation and also depending on the design. But in this design, we just don't want the power factor to be equal to 1, it's just for the exercise. So we would like to move from the leading situation to a lagging situation. Because actually this whole region must be supplied by the inductive part. 